Logic Pro for the iPad has been out for a little bit over a month now. I had the chance to kind of put it through the paces, play around with it, uh, use it to do a mix. Uh, I've produced with it. And while I think this is probably one of the best things that could have came to the iPad as far as music production is concerned, there's still quite a few things that just don't make this a pro workflow for us that really, really use this and rely on this for pro production slash mixing. Now I've been using Logic Pro on the desktop for well over a decade now, probably since like 2010, 2009-ish. Uh, so I've been in the Logic game for a while. I've produced with it, I've mixed with it, I've mastered with it, I've gigged with it. So when it came to the iPad, I was really excited to be able to put this through the paces because I thought this is gonna be the thing that we've been looking for. This is the thing that's gonna really get us through. But as I've worked my way through it, I found that there's so many things that are missing and that just really hinder me as a professional uh, trying to use something that is deemed as pro. So for instance, inside of Logic, we have like this toolbar area, right? Where we get all of these functions that we use, you know, kind of like quick actions or whatever that we can kind of jump back and forth into. But in here, you can even add or take away, like I can go customize toolbar and I can add in different other, uh, you know, little functions uh, that I can get to really, really quickly. It's proved to be one of the best functions in Logic in terms of getting around. However, we don't really have that level of functionality. There is like some basic actions here with looping and things of that nature, trimming, but there's no way to customize it. Even if I tap here, I get a couple of other options, but nothing that is as comprehensive as what I have up here inside of Logic, the actual desktop version. Now, one of the major features that is missing inside of Logic Pro for the iPad is Flex Pitch, boys and girls. This is one of the most game-changing features that Logic had built into it because it's pretty much like, I think with the side, there's a few other dolls that have this, but Logic is one of the main major dolls that actually has vocal tuning built natively into the DAW itself. So that in and of itself makes it a game-changing feature uh, because you can do everything, your vocal tuning, you don't need any third-party Melodyne or Waves Tune or any other you know, pitch correction, not pitch correction, but vocal tuning thing like that, you know what I mean? But on the iPad, while there is several uh, flex options, flex pitch is missing. And that was something that I would absolutely love to have on my iPad uh, because having like something like the Apple Pencil makes it really easy on the iPad to really edit. And I really enjoy utilizing the Apple Pencil. So if I could like theoretically get really fine with my pencil and like adjusting pitch that can make the iPad a powerhouse for like doing like on the fly editing. And I can literally go through with my pencil holding my iPad in my hand and be able to tune vocals. I think that would be absolutely mind blowing and powerful because it's much quicker and easier to get in and do fine edits with the iPad using uh, the Apple pencil. And I love this combination when it comes to uh, my workflow. And while we're here with flex features one of the most powerful things about flex pitch is the ability to utilize it to convert audio to midi i could literally go here into my edit menu and scroll down and click create midi track from flex pitch data and it literally goes and creates a MIDI track that has all of those notes in there. I've used that for a myriad of options over the years when it comes to uh, production. Utilizing that, like doubling melodies, it's so many different things you can do with flex pitch and using that to convert audio to MIDI. There's just so many more things I can do with this data that I just can't do with the iPad version because there's no flex pitch in here. So one powerful feature that I use all the time on Logic Pro for the desktop is uh, drum replacement. I literally just hit Command D while I'm on my snare and it pulls up this dialog box that uh, allows me to replace my drum. So I can layer my snare, layer my kick. Uh, it's a very powerful feature when you're working with acoustic drums uh, to really beef them up and allow them to cut through the mix so you don't need anything like 
trigger or any uh, SPL or any other kind of drum plugin to be able to replace drums because you can do it natively inside of Logic. Again, that feature is totally missing inside of the uh, Logic for iPad. So if I'm working with my drums here, there's no way that I can convert this audio or any of these transients in this audio into uh, MIDI so that I could be able to uh, replace the snare or layer on top of the snare or layer on top of the kick. It's a very powerful workflow feature that I've utilized for years uh, and I cannot do it on my iPad, which gives it another knock against whether or not this is really for uh, a pro that's really doing work on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, one of the biggest things, and this is well documented that most people talk about is that you don't have third-party VST uh, support for like all of our major VSTs like Omnisphere, Silent, Serum, uh, so on and so forth. They just don't work because of the limitations of uh, iOS. But with that said, even the stock plugins that are here in Logic uh, on the iPad aren't the full versions. Like I can't use the full sampler. I can use quick sampler. I get options with that. But when it start, when I start adding other uh, instruments in here, I can't really get like the full versions of it. Like the EQ, it will definitely show up and perform and work just like the EQ on uh, the desktop version. But if I come in here and say add something like a uh, tube EQ, let's go to the vintage EQ collection and do the tube EQ. I don't get the same GUI or GUI that I would get inside of the uh, full version of Logic or even say like the vintage organ. While this is cool to have all of these parameters and all of these things, like I am missing just the general GUI that I get inside of the full version of Logic. When I'm working inside of Logic, I'm getting full draw bar control. I'm getting all of these distortion. It, the GUI is there. The rotor cabinet is there. It really makes me feel like I'm working on a real B3 because we have, and I think this is a real missed opportunity because we have multi-touch on the iPad as an organist, like we're often like pulling out multiple draw bars at the same time. So like if I had an interface where I could literally just reach up with my hands and like grab multiple draw bars and pull them out, that would just be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Now, another thing that's majorly missing inside of Logic on the iPad is the ability to export audio or MIDI from a region uh, just here. Like if I click on this region, there's no option in here to just simply export out the MIDI uh, to another location. It's a feature that I use quite often in the desktop version because if I right click, I could easily go to export as a MIDI file, export as an audio file. There's just so many features that I use on a regular, regular basis that I just can't simply do on the iPad. Now, speaking of export, there are a lot of export options that are clearly missing from the iPad version. So here on the desktop version, when I am bouncing an audio, I have several options, uh, M4A, uh, PCM, uh, burning it to a CD. I mean, who's still doing that? I'm not understanding why that's still in Logic, but you know, or even on the iPad, I wouldn't expect that to be there. But still, I have all of these options, but one that I use, and I'm sure you use all the time, is MP3. But here on the iPad, I only have two options. That's uncompressed WAV file and then a compressed M4A file. Now, I know some people probably won't whine about the fact of MP3, but that is a standard codec that we all use and we send. Uh, WAV files are very large files. They're larger files. You often can't attach those to email. Uh, you often have to upload a WAV to like a Dropbox or something like that to be able to send over to a client for review. We use MP3s all of the time. I know it's a lossy Kodak or whatever. Uh, most people use Waves, but we use MP3s. Don't act like you don't use an MP3. And I'm very shocked that that simple thing is not in there because it's a Kodak that I still use all the time when sending out references. So probably the most frustrating thing about Logic on the iPad is that I cannot import multiple uh, audio files. So if I try to drag all of these files in and drop them, nothing happens. You cannot import multiple files inside of Logic. And why that's important is if I'm working on trying to mix inside of Logic or even bringing files in from an external source, maybe some stems that a drummer sent me or uh, vocal files, background vocals that were cut somewhere else and I'm trying to bring them into my session, well, I've got to bring all of those files in one by one, which may not be a bad thing for some people, but if you've got like 
a lot of fouls, like 30, 40 fouls. Maybe uh, some of these tracks get up, like especially from mixing, 70, 80, 90, 100 tracks, and you're trying to bring them in one by one. It's just gonna take forever. Now, speaking of mixing and doing those things, one of the most uh, frustrating things to me is also the fact that there is no control surface support as of yet in Logic Pro. So when I'm mixing uh, and doing automation, something like this Fader Port 8, I, I rely on this heavily uh, in all of my mixes in terms of getting around once I've gotten past production and I'm trying to mix, this is where I'm doing a lot of my work at. So. And the fact that there's not even like MIDI mapping or anything that I can do inside of here in order to like map faders uh, and such to a MIDI controller to be able to use it that way is actually really, really frustrating to me. Now, something else that's probably not a major thing to a lot of people is the fact that there is no score editor inside of Logic on the iPad, which means this isn't really for composers. So if you're a guy or a gal that's dependent on Logic for years for its notation abilities uh, and its ability to create scores and print them and send them to musicians and uh, just have your whole thing kind of sketched out, you won't be able to do any of this on the iPad version because it's just MIA for whatever reason they didn't decide to add it in. Now, another feature that is missing that I use quite a bit when it comes to production and arranging and doing all those things is uh, the notes feature inside of Logic. Now, it's missing on the iPad, you can't do it. This is important as a producer because when I am working with other musicians and other uh, engineers and people from across everywhere remotely and we're recording things, and even if I'm sending sessions to people, the notes section is important to me because I'm able to uh, send detailed notes to whoever else is working on the project on what they need to do next and what I need from them on this particular thing, references, things of that nature. And there also is per uh, track uh, notes that I can add in on here to be able to say uh, what is what. So I'm able to put those notes on the track, put those notes on uh, the whole thing. So when they open up the session, they're able to look at what I'm working on, what I've done, all of those things like that. And it just makes things easier when you got multiple people working on one particular logic session. And I would love to be able to do this on the iPad as well. So another thing that's missing inside of Logic for the iPad is arrangement markers. On the desktop version, I can add in arrangement markers, which allow me to do specific things inside of that are not like the traditional markers. Like I can delete this whole section of the song because it's under that marker, or I can take this part and I can actually move it around. So it makes things a whole lot easier when working uh, on an arrangement and being able to move things and create things and kind of know where things are but sadly these are missing inside of logic for the iPad you just don't have that option it's only uh, just regular markers and these are just a handful of the features that are missing from logic pro on the iPad There's still several others that I just don't have time to talk about in this video Like you can't do spatial audio on the iPad. There's no save as so to speak There's a way to do it, but it's not like a save as and that's important when you've been working on something for an hour I just want to be able to save as the interface of it is just clunky to kind of get around uh, It's difficult to kind of really get in and mess around with different things. And another thing that's really, really clunky is the whole key command things like, just throw all of the key commands you know about Logic on the desktop, just throw them out the window. There's a whole nother set of key commands that you gotta learn. And while I realize this is definitely the first version of Logic Pro for the iPad, uh, and I have some grace for it on there, it's still amazing, it's still wonderful. I still enjoy using it, especially with the Apple Pencil. Uh, it just feels really, really good and really, really natural workflow to kind of work through. I'm confident that these features are gonna grow and they're gonna continue to add these things in, but as of right now, uh, it is not uh, just ready fully for pros in my opinion. And that doesn't mean that it's not for anybody. That just means it's not for everybody. And a lot of us in the pro world that have been working in audio for decades uh, up to this point uh, and working with Logic since, you know, 
whenever, wherever. Um, we want these features. We rely on these features. And there's nothing more I want than being able to just work solely, completely on my iPad. No need for a MacBook. Just take this with me. Just sit on the couch and just produce, just mix, just do different things like that. I would love to be able to do those things. So Apple, if you're listening, these are uh, just a handful of things that I would love to implement, uh, see implemented inside of Logic Pro. And if there's some things that you want to see implemented, make sure you leave it down in the comments. We don't know. Apple may watch this. They may be in a space where they can uh, help us start, you know, getting some of these features over and making uh, the iPad the ultimate device for music production. And I think Logic is poised to do that. It's just not ready yet. Speaking of not being ready yet, if you're interested to know whether or not you should upgrade to the newest version of Mac OS, which is Sonoma that is out, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll talk to you guys later. I'm out. Holla at your boy.